carry me through. Oh, God is able. He's able. I know He's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven is not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beck on me from heaven's open door, and I can't be at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven is not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beck on me from heaven's open door, and I can't be at home in this world anymore. Amen, amen, and amen. While you're still standing, could you please be on your feet, stretch forth, and help me bless today's tithes and offering. If you're trusting God for open door, this is the moment where you pray over your offering, you pray over your tithes. For those who were not able to give, this is the moment where you pray. We are on holy ground and God is with us. So I would say tap into what is going on here this morning and just say a word of prayer. Let us pray, most righteous and compassionate Father, it is us again, Lord. Father God, thank you for how great you are, for how awesome you are. Father God, you are wonderful, you are glorious, you are magnificent. Father God, you always seem to put us in awe. Lord God, you have blessed us with a place of worship, Lord God. And I just want to say thank you for answering our prayers, Lord God. Thank you for not, uh, not letting our prayers fall on deaf ears, but you opened the doors. And Lord God, if you have done it for us, we know that you can do it again, Lord. So Father God, we are stretching forth our offering and ties to you, Almighty God. And I pray that you will bless us. You will multiply our ties and our offering. Father God, as we go about to pay our our rent for El Shaddai prayer tower. Let us not lack Almighty God, but every month our rent shall turn up and that everyone who are having trouble paying their rent, who are paying their bills, that you will remember them this morning for they have given out of the little that they have, Lord God Almighty. So I pray that you will multiply Lord Jesus so that their storehouse will never go empty. Lord God Almighty, I pray for those who are trusting you for healing mercy that you will remember them this morning the same way you remember Noah in the ark, Lord. I pray that you will remember us all. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We say amen. Amen. And if you could remain on your feet. We have, really, we have already set the atmosphere. We welcome the presence of the Lord. And so we want to welcome his servant that is about to bless us with the word this morning. And if you could just avail yourself, if you could just decrease yourself so that whatever our speaker have to place on our heart, that we will accept it. And in the same manner, let us say a word of prayer as she make her way to the stage. Most righteous and compassionate Father, as we come before your presence once more, Lord God, we place your speaker before you, Almighty God. I pray that you may anoint her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, that you may cancel every plot, every plans of the enemy this moment, Lord God Almighty. I pray that you may keep your hedge of protection around her, Lord Jesus, and that whatever you place on her, that it will activate and that we shall receive it, Almighty God. I pray that you let us be the good soil that these words be fall upon. In your precious name we pray, Lord. I pray that you may decrease her so that you may increase in her this morning. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Continue to clap for Jesus. 
continue to clap for Jesus. It's so sweet to trust him. It's so sweet to trust him. Clap for Jesus. When you trust him, clap for him. Clap for Jesus Christ. My God, clap. Your clap is like a slap to your enemies. Your clap is like a slap, oh God, to your enemies. Clap your way through this week. Clap for victory. Let victory be your portion this week. As you clap for Jesus, you're breaking the jawbone of your enemy. As you clap for Jesus, you're breaking the back of your enemy. As you clap for Jesus, you're taking it by force. Ay, 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 clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to give us a hallelujah this morning and then give God your biggest hallelujah. Give us a hallelujah. A hallelujah for El Shaddai and a hallelujah for Jesus. A big hallelujah for Jesus. Hey! My God. I'm so thankful to God for salvation. Salvation is sweet. If you are not a part of the family of God, it's time for you to do so. There's an old song that says, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Washed in his fountain, cleansed by his blood. Down came my Jesus as I travel along. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I just want to thank God for each and every one. Sister Keisha, God bless you. You came here and I sit here and I watch you. You're learning. Somebody clap for Sister Keisha. She's learning and she's growing. I, I like to watch people grow. And if God is calling you to leadership, just remember, if you cannot train someone, you are not a good leader. Leaders raise up other leaders. So I thank God for your life. You may take your seat. Somebody clap for Jesus. My God. Welcome, Mama. Welcome. God bless you. I salute you. You know, it's such a pleasure to have an elder in our midst. Clap for Jesus. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You know, my mom always tells me, she said, age is honorable and youth is noble. So when we have an elder in our midst, we just have to honor. The Bible said to whom honor is due, we better give it. And when you see someone that could be your mother or your grandmother, she could be my mother. I take my hat and I salute you. May the Lord bless you. I know in this Bible study you had so much to say, but you hold your peace. <laughs> I saw her in the spirit. But I also want to tell you something. You know, last night I was praying for you. And the Lord said I should tell you that anybody who is coming after your children... God will revenge them. He said, don't worry. You're... Jesus. He said, anybody that's coming after your children, he didn't say your grandchildren, your children, he's going to revenge them. I was praying for you. And I placed you before God. So God knows your heart. And he knows that you worry about your children. So I pray today that this thing will come to pass. God don't lie. God don't lie. He never lie. He never fail me yet. He never fail me yet. Jesus Christ never failed me yet. 
Anywhere I go, I want the world to know Jesus Christ never failed me, yeah. He never failed me yet. Hey, hey, hey! He never failed me. Jesus Christ never failed me, yeah. Anywhere I go, I want the world. Jesus Christ never failed me, yeah. Hallelujah! He never failed me, yeah. Jesus Christ never failed me, yeah. Jesus, anywhere I go. Jesus Christ never failed me, yeah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you for your goodness and your mercies. My God. Jesus. Mama, are you going to be here next week Sunday with us? Come, come, let me pray for you. Come on, let me pray. I just want to bless you. God said we should just bless you and declare long life. Hallelujah. The Bible said when a man wears please God, his enemies will be at peace with him. May your enemies be at peace with you because of the life you live for the Lord. My God. I pray for you right now. I want you to stretch forth your hand and pray for her. Ask God to give her a long life. Long life. I already prayed last night. And the Lord showed me her. You did so much for the Lord in church. You did so much for the Lord in church. Did it bring jealousy? Hey, hey, hey. Thank you, Jesus. Strengthen her, Lord. Give her strength, oh God. Give her strength, Daddy Jesus. May she live long in the name of Jesus Christ. Have your way, oh God. And it will be well with her. We declare you will live long. The Lord said, I should tell her, they're going to son you. They're going to son you. The Lord said, they're going to son you. In the name of Jesus, I declare long life will be your portion. People of God, this is the thing that happens when you live to please God. Look at her. I don't know this lady. But look at her and you see God. The devil you tried to use her too, and it didn't happen. The devil look after this woman so much time. But because of the blood. But mama, I declare long life over you. You will never go back to Jamaica the way you came. You're going back stronger. 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 I don't know, Hayada Baba. I don't know what's on your heart. But the Lord said I should tell you, trust him trust him raise your hand to him your right hand raise the right hand your right hand did no open it oh you have a wound on this thing here on the chair he caught you the devil is a liar hold this raise raise your hand to God Lord, I place her before you. You know her. You know her address. And Lord, we are sending her to that bedroom that she's sleeping in Jamaica. And we ask you to turn everything around. No early morning sound. You know, sometimes you go somewhere, you hear a sound in the morning, and it wake you up. I pray that you will never be tormented. They will never torment you. It will be well. You will live long. And you will prophesy in your old age. Jesus, what am I saying? I hear the Lord said I should tell you. You're going to prophesy in your old age. You're going to speak things over people. And it will come to pass. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is about to change your story. In your old age. In your old age. 
I decree and I declare upon your life. It is done in the name of Jesus. You know the Bible says when Saul went to look for his father donkey. That's when he met Samuel. And Samuel kept him. He said stay tonight and don't worry about the donkey. By the time you get home the donkey will be, will be found. And in this time you're here. You know. Everything that you came to do, God, God already take care of it. Mama, God already take care of everything that you came to do. Everything that you come to this country to do. You're just going to sit and hear the testimonies. They're going to call you and tell you the thing take place. You won't have to say much. So I declare upon you, you will have that peace. 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 May the Lord bless you and give you a long life. As you walk to your seat, it will be well. It is done. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. The storm is over. The storm is over. The storm is over, Mama. Nama Sata. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, um, God has been faithful to us. It's nine months. On the 27th of August, it was nine months since we've been in this room, in this building having service. And they have us from the back to the front, from the front to the back. And we have been praying for God to give us a place of worship. And on the ninth month, the lease was ready. And I signed the lease on the 28th of August for the new place. So it took us nine months. Somebody clap for Jesus. Nine months to give birth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Today is the last day in this building. Next Sunday, we will have service at the new address. So if you want to take pictures, take pictures because it won't look like this. <laughs> but we are going with Jesus. Somebody clap for Jesus. We are going with Daddy Jesus. King Jesus. So nine months. And in the ninth month, God bless us. You see, El Shaddai prayer to us started in my kitchen. And nine months later, we were in this room. And nine months in this room, we're going to another place. Clap for Jesus. So we take nine months to give birth. And I believe in God. I declare today upon this element. That before that lease is done, God will bless us with a place of our own. Hey! I believe God. I believe God. That before that lease is finished, I signed a one-year lease for the ministry for El Shaddai Prayer International Inc. They changed some things and they removed Toa and put the ink on it, on the government document. So we're going to raise this before God and bless it. And for those of you who know who you are, if you're qualified, we're going to break bread in here before we go. It's first Sunday. Let us pray. Father, we release this before you. And we lift it up to you, Daddy Jesus. We lift this element to you. And we ask you, oh God, to do something afresh in us. Do something new. Many will begin to birth out their own homes and their own business and ministries. Many will give birth to whatever calling that is on their life. Many will find peace many will find your husband and many will find your wives but lord i pray today that heaven will release those spouses we ask you lord god to release divine spouse in the ministry for the single men and women so they can have their peace and be clean 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody clap for Jesus. I know some of you are looking for a place. Some of you are looking for a home. Some of you are looking for a new apartment. Some of you are waiting for husbands. Some of you are waiting to divorce. Some of you, everybody's waiting for something. But today I release in the atmosphere the spirit of newness. Newness in the name of Jesus Christ. Newness. You shall flourish. You shall flourish. You shall flourish. You shall flourish and grow and bear fruit. And you shall be planted like the trees. Hallelujah. By the rivers of Babylon. You see the song says where we sat down. But I pray today that you shall be as firm as the, the trees in of Basham. The cedars of Basham or Basham. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to raise this up before God. You're not only doing it for yourself, you're doing it for the Lord. Raise it up before God and thank him. See, God has been faithful to us. And this is our way of telling him thanks. The Bible said, according to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24, that the night before Jesus was betrayed, he broke bread with his disciples. I want you to open it. They are easy to open. And we're waiting. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. So go ahead. You can open it. Just slightly peel the top. And if you're watching online, I am encouraging you to break bread with us today. I am encouraging you to break bread with us today. You're not only doing it for yourself. You're doing it for others in the ministry. Grab water. Or wherever you are, and if you can, a little piece of cracker or bread or something. And let us break bread. Jesus. Jesus said, this is my body. Which is broken for you. You can't open it? ahead and eat. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 24. Verse 25 he said, then Jesus pick up the cup and he said, this cup is the new testament, the new covenant in my blood. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. So we are not doing this for pastor. We're doing it for Jesus Christ and the ministry. Go ahead and drink. Somebody clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. You see, anywhere you go and you see God answering prayer, it means it's fruitful grounds. Anywhere you go, any church you go, and you see God answering prayer. It means that we are on fertile ground. The song says we are standing on holy ground. She's using my thing to wipe her face. <laughs> we are standing. 
Prostitution is taking place upstairs. People became crackhead in this building. People became millionaires in this building. People became sick in this building. All kinds of things take place here. But we gave birth in this building. So clap for Jesus. It means that it doesn't matter where you are. God will visit you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people say. It means that don't listen to naysayers and gainsayers. I remember when Brother Tony and myself came in this place. He found a place and he, they told me to come and we meet and we came in. And he said to me, Rev, I, I, I want to get married. I said, do it. He said, my girlfriend is pregnant. I said, congratulations. And today he's a married man. And he got married in this building. The baby got dedicated in this building. Oh, Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Clap like you need something from God. He will answer you. He's a prayer answering God. The man helped me to find the building. And he got married in the building. Oh, hallelujah. You don't know how powerful that is. Let us thank God for his goodness and his mercies. God is faithful. He is faithful and he will not trick you. He will not deceive you. And whatever he said about it will come to pass. So I just want to say good afternoon. We are a little bit behind time. Bible study took up the time, but you know, I prefer Bible study to take up the time than anything else. We thank God for Bible study. Clap for Jesus. We thank God for what he's doing in our, in, among us. You see, two years ago today, I was in Jamaica doing charity. As I lift up my phone, this is the picture. That's me in El Shaddai t-shirt. Going around, that was a part in Clarendon. Asburn, I think it's called Asburn Store, giving food to unprivileged people because I don't look at people that have gate on their house I go to the ones that have no gate that is made of zinc that you can see in the house from outside and those are the people that we look forward to bless I give God thanks for El Shaddai two years ago if you want to know go on Facebook and you will see the picture two years ago we were in Jamaica two years ago today we were in Jamaica distributing groceries hallelujah you see this is why the minute the, the, this is the secret to success when you give when you do charity give give till it hurts and one day God will remember you for your giving clap for Jesus we didn't have a church two years ago we didn't have a place I just it's just my kitchen 
and out of the kitchen birthed places for us to worship God and we will not stop moving until we get our own and we thank God yes we thank God for what he's doing and this is how you get to understand that if I was taking I was talking to we have a ministry in England clap for England I want you to know we have a ministry in England and the people in England are arguing with me that oh so Rev just know that when that church in Jamaica finished you're coming to do it in England I say yes I, I, and I'm not lying I said yes so it's a lot sister Nikki you think standing up here is a lot do you think it's a lot it's not a lot I wish that's my position you know some people see you standing here and they envy your position and they don't know you have two children you're a single mom and you work and go to school and by the time they hear about the school they don't want your, your position anymore so if you envy me, you better envy my position too. After putting up with Brother Deva and everybody here, how argumentative he was. It's the same way at home. Yes. You know, there's a man, his, his name is Dr. Apaya. I think he's from Ghana. I was watching him on social media. And he said, you have to be stupid to stay married. He said, I've been stupid for 38 years. <laughs> He said, marriage is stupidity. Because sometimes that person does some stupid things and you just have to put up with them. Is it true, mommy? No, you see, it's commitment. Even when they mess up, you still stay with them. So that's the stupidity part, right? In a, look, in a good way, you're right. Because some people act funny and you still have to like, I can't believe I really am, I'm dealing with this. But you know, we have to allow God to be in the forefront of it. Amen. So clap for marriage. Because some people in here are going to marry to some stupid people. And God, and God is going to sort them out. It's true. Why are you laughing? Let me tell you something. You know the most stupidest people on earth is the one that's educated. Did you know that? They call them sophisticated fools. Excuse me. They got big degrees and they don't even know how to cook. Am I lying, mommy? They don't know how to handle the house business. Hey, there we go. So clap for Jesus. Clap for marriage. Yes. So you see, I have backup. I have an elder that will back me up with the truth. She's not going to back me up with a lie. All right, because she have, and you see that big rock on her finger? <laughs> Clap for marriage! <laughs> we give God praise. He's a good God. Amen. I pray that every one of you here get, to get the taste of a good marriage, a godly marriage. That is my prayer for each and every one of you here. Even you, you're looking at me sideways. I pray that you get the taste of a godly marriage. It is well. You can take your seat so we can dig into the word. I'm not going to belong. I'm excited because of the things that are happening in the ministry. And I'm very excited. Believe me, it might not seem that way, but I am. All right, today we're going to talk about forgiveness. And it's not easy. Everybody that saw me yesterday on Instagram for two minutes, there was a young man in my house. He came to do some work, some repair work. And the Lord used me to speak to him. And he have long locks, so he tied up on his head and everything. You know how those people have their own philosophy of things. and they, they So I allow him to speak. I, I was eating my dry toast. And yes, it was dry. Nothing was on it. Just some dry bread. You know, a piece of Ezekiel bread. And he was giving me a whole lot of conversation. He said, I'm Bobo Shanti. So if I use that word, everybody know who I was, who was in my house yesterday. Bobo. So when Bobo began to, you see, I like to talk about such and such man. So such and such man was in my house yesterday. Say, so it's Bobo Shanti. I said, yes. I catch this one. 
He right up in my alley. So I allow him to talk and he was telling me, you know, you can be successful and he's this. And I said, in the name of Jesus. And he said, ah, Allah too. I said, Allah, but the egg never finished boiling yet. So I waited until the egg boil and cool. And I started to eat. I said, so you are Muslim? He said, no, man, but you know, it go already. I said, oh, it go. And him start to talk and him talk and him talk. I'm just referring to something that happened in my apartment yesterday. And he was just talking and talking and talking and him read this book. And when him read the book and him get a lot of knowledge from the book and him daughter get the book and she read. And she said, tell your daughter what God revealed to you. He said, what you say? I said, tell your daughter what God revealed to you from the book. Whatever book you read and you receive so much knowledge share it with your daughter give her the revelation that god gave you and him continue when him finish you know the lord told me to pull up forgiveness scriptures and i spoke to him and i told him about everybody know i like to talk about cornelius so oh, he was not a saved man but he was very generous to god people and one day it became for for a memorial and god Send Peter to his house to bless him. And when Peter went to his house to bless him, Peter said, but you are not even qualified because you're not a Jew. You know, so Peter said, oh, so now I know that God is not a respecter of person. I was talking to him about himself. Because he's a bobo shanty in my kitchen, in my, in my living room, telling me about Rasta life. So I did not stop him. I allowed him to talk because he is a man of God in sin yes in sin have you ever met a woman of god that's living in sin anybody understand what i just said he's a man of god living in sin i was gonna pull out the scripture to show him that jesus said it's a shame for a man to have long hair and I, the holy spirit said hold that one so i went to him about cornelius and i talked to him about cornelius and i point out what peter did I said, and then Peter baptized them because they started to speak in tongues. He stopped what he was doing and he looked at me. I said, you're finished? He said, no, I'm not finished. Continue. Keep talking. I said, oh, conviction. And I, then I began to tell him what Jesus said. How oh, you want people to forgive you if you don't forgive others. I said, you need to forgive some people. And he was there with the thing in his hand stuck and i'm telling him what god said about forgiveness that he have to let people go no this guy is a musician what are you doing in my house if you're a musician talking about you're, you're here to service for other people's stuff and when before we were done he bring up a subject that didn't make a whole lot of sense but i had to listen to him because the bible said be quick to listen so I listened to him. And I said, give me your hands. He said, no. So he picked up his toolbox and he placed it under his arm and he was talking. So I said, you're ready. So when he finished explaining, I don't know what God began to use me to tell this man, but he put it down and he said, you can pray for me now. I said, I didn't tell you I was going to pray for you. I said, give me your hands. I didn't tell anything about prayer. So... I have my anointing oil in my car because I was getting ready to go do my laundry. So I keep the oil in the car and a little holy water in a bottle. And when he gave me his hands, they were dry. Anybody understand what I just said? I didn't say he had, his hands were dry because he need lotion. He's very handsome. Look on Instagram and see him on my page. Because he got a fresh mouth. But that part was not recorded. He said, pray for me. I said, pray for you. What? You want me to pray for you? You saw me. You took your baggage and you were leaving. I said, do me a favor. Go to my car. And you see the oil. And he run. You should see this man like he was my child. Run into my car to get my anointing oil to pour on him. Bobo Shanti. Run to his car. Hey, yeah, yeah. Anybody understand what just take place? Bobo, run to my car to get the oil. And I pour some in his hand. And he, he, I said, I pour some more. And 
Lord said, put it on your back. And he looked at me and said, yes, round there. And I prayed. And the Lord used me to bless him and prayed for him. And when he was leaving, he said, thank you so much, mommy. He said, I'm your son. So you see again, a bubble son. But when people come around you, don't look at them funny. Don't stereotype them because of how they dress. God is in him. God is with him. And he said to me, there's an old lady that he went to her house the other day to work. And the lady is 102 years old. And, he, and she said, you know the secret to my looking so good? She said, every day I wake up, I dress like I'm going on a date. And I praise God. So ladies, take this today. Dress up every day like you're going on a date. Sister Lorraine, this is for you too. Every day. Just like you're going on a date. It works. It makes you happy. My sister. It works. It works. The woman, somebody clap for Jesus. The woman is a hundred and change. So when he told me that, I said, I heard this before. My daughter's job. She said, mommy, we have to dress every day like we're going on a date. So the thing works. The thing works. So I learned something from him that he learned from someone else. So when he came on my live, he said, you're going to make me famous. I said, no, I'm not making you famous. You see? And he said, but I teach. I said, tell people what you taught me. I'm here to let you know people of God. Wherever you are, be in the spirit. If I was not in the spirit, I could not minister to a bubble. You think it easy? But God will put the right word in your mouth to share to his people. He needed it. If he spent longer with me, maybe something would have happened because when I finished praying, he was ready for prayer. You know those kind of people? You finished praying, but they're waiting for you to say more waiting for more. So I thank God for his life. I did not tell him anything about our address but one thing I said to him hurry up because I, I have things to do. I'm moving. I'm trying to set up church. He said where? And I told him we're going to Hartford. He said so where did you start? I said in my kitchen right there. He said you Jamaicans. <laughs> he said you Jamaican you can do anything he's Jamaican too he said you can do anything I said I know we thank God you see we need to know who we are and it's not just Jamaicans it's Caribbean people we, 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 we can do things even if we didn't learn in school because many things that we learn is hands on so we need to master what we can do I asked him, what do you do for a living? He said, I'm a musician. I'm like, what are you doing in this job? He said, I'm trying to meet people. I said, no, the blood of Jesus. And I begin to pray. And when I finished praying, I said, you know, I like to say, in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, amen, hallelujah. Uh, he's a man of God. Him, the, man, the young man, he could be my son. He said, I told you I'm your son. And I had compassion on him. And I pray that whatever prayers I pray for him, it will go towards my sons and my spiritual sons out there. Because he need a breakthrough. How could you be a musician and you're working? The devil, you see how wicked the devil can be. So whatever you have, master it and ask God to bless you. Master what you have. So today, when, when he was leaving, he said, I have a lot of people to forgive. Too many. When you're a musician, people abuse you. They lie to you. They trick you. They use you. Yes! They trample upon him. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. Fix the arm. Amen. <laughs> So this morning, I want you to open your Bible to the book of Proverbs chapter 29. We have to learn forgiveness. We have to. There are some things that we need to know. It's not easy to forgive people. 
But look at Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18 and see what it says. Proverbs 29 and 18. It says, when people don't accept divine guidance, they run wild. It says, where there is no vision, people will perish. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18. Where there is no vision, people, the people will perish. So if you're a part of a ministry and there is no vision, you're in trouble. It's true. <laughs> Even if you can't see, and pastor cannot see, you're still in trouble. Because the vision is not you, it's for the pastor. That's why Eli had so much problems. Because he couldn't see anything. And God raised up Samuel right under his nose. And therefore, the Bible tells us that many people know a lot of scriptures. They can quote the scripture left, right, and center. But if you are not obeying the scripture, it makes no sense to read the Bible. It don't make no sense to read the Bible if you cannot obey the voice of God. It's true. And I say this with no apologies because even online there are some people writing some foolishness on other people's platforms. Because I see them. Go and study the word of God and believe it. Jesus said, believe. He said, repent and believe the gospel. If you don't believe the word of God, it makes sense you'll get rid of your Bible. Because you don't, the, the word is God. And if you don't believe, then you don't need no Bible. Why would you have the Bible if you don't believe? For cover up? No, in the book of John chapter 14 and verse 15, the word of God make it clear. He said, if you love me, obey my commandment. And if you ask for anything in my name, I will give it to you. John chapter 14 and verse 15. But if you look back at verse 14, it says, if you ask me for anything, I am going to give it to you. Just ask me the right way. There is a way to ask for things. There is a right way. Some of us don't know how to beg. And this is why we have been begging for years and still broke. It's true. He said, if you ask for anything in my name, I will give it to you so you don't have to go beg anybody for anything and or even pretend. Some of us have to pretend as if we are big shots and we are broke. It's true. So here is the word of God. There is a way to go to God to ask him for stuff if you like to beg. Some of us don't want to wait on God to give us anything. But I like surprises. I've been looking for a place of worship and everywhere I go, I'm disappointed. There was a time when we went someplace to find a nice church. Fully loaded. Somebody said fully loaded. It was fully loaded. The kitchen was like a five-star restaurant. People of God, it was fully loaded. And until today, we can't know the reason why we were not qualified. I only accuse it. I bl I'm blaming it on the sword. Huh? I know. So I blame it on the sword because those people follow me on social media, but they didn't rent us their place. See, when they see the sword and they heard the word, ah, they're Adventist, mama. And therefore, you know, God will show us places and places, but the day when we were about to find this place, it's not the best place because it's an office space. And I was getting ready and I received a phone call 
Rev, um, you ready? I said, two o'clock. You mean you're coming two o'clock or what? I said, two. And it keeps saying two o'clock, keep coming out. Of my, I said, you know, by two o'clock, God will make a decision. And at 1.54, a decision was made. We need to believe in what comes out of our mouth. If you don't believe in your prayers, don't pray. If you don't believe in the word of God, close the Bible. Because every word of God is true. And when we went to the place, go look at another place in a better neighborhood. It never qualify. It never passed the test because now I have it in my hands to choose who I do business. Many of the things that we don't get. When we are doing business with people, we are the boss. If you are looking for a place to rent, you are the boss. It's your money. It, it's time for us to stop begging people to do business with us. When we are benefiting them. You have power that you don't know that you have. And so I went to another place with the realtor. And when we look, I said, no, no. I don't want no steps. I don't want no stairs. You see, the rich man have a criteria that you have to meet. The poor man have a criteria that the rich man have to meet. So when you're renting people, please, just know that they need your money. And don't let people take your money and bully you. And so, the place have a ramp. <laughs> so anybody can come with a cane. Or a wheelchair. Or a baby stroller. We have the space. It have chairs. It have a little bit of furniture. So until God bless us, when we can afford to buy our own furniture... There it is. All we need is right now is about 25 cheers. We have a room for the kids. We can go there any day. When you are doing business with people, when you are renting, remember you are in business. You are the boss, not them. They have to meet your expectation. And it's the same thing with God. It's the same thing with God. If you really want to go to heaven, God is your boss. Not the person who signed your paycheck. God is your boss. And if you don't believe me, Jesus said, you eat that fruit and you'll die. He said, don't die in your sins. In the book of John chapter 9, he said, don't die in your sin. Your sin will kill you. If you really want to live, and live a good life. Live a life to please God. Some people will be jealous of you. They don't know how you do it. How you manage. How you're making it. But all because of the blood. They don't see you on your knees worshiping God. And they see you moving around. And everything is happening and looking good. And they don't know how many tears you cry in the dark. He said ask for anything in my name. And I will give it to you. So when you go back at Proverbs chapter 29. If you look at verse 1. It says something slick. It says, Whosoever stubbornly refused to accept criticism will suddenly be destroyed beyond recovery. God have expectation from us too. Many of us, we're not, we're not living our life to please God because God didn't give us husband. Who told you that your husband is nowhere near you when character needs to fix so man said they're not going to no church till God give them wife. Who told you that God is going to give you a woman of God? And you need to stop teeth. So man still a pervert. Who told you God is going to give you a woman of God for a wife and you're still a pedophile? You need to be delivered. You need to be set free. You want to be married and settle down, but you're still masturbating. Ah. 
you're still lying. You're still stealing. And you want God to give you that job. You'll go to prison if God gives certain people a certain job because they need deliverance from thievery. Am I lying? Certain place some people cannot go until they are delivered. Because the old man is not dead. And the old man needs to die. Hey, Ababa The Lord said I should tell you. The Lord said I should tell you. Don't, don't say nothing. Don't complain. Things are happening in your favor. It seems like it's not in your favor, but it is. God said, Thank, be thankful. He said, rejoice. Raise your hand and give him thanks. The Lord do it for you. The Lord did something that was behind the scenes that you'll find out a year from now. The Lord set you free. Thank you, Jesus. Some things behind the scene. You see, when Haman was trying to build that, build that gallows, that's what he called for, for, for Mordecai. He didn't know he was going to fall in it. And God allowed him to fall in it. So today we pray against every Haman that is among us that we know. Many of us, we have some Haman, we related to them. Many of us used to sleep with some Haman. But, and we are Mordecai. And God separate us. God separate us from some Haman. And Haman fell into the gallows that he was digging for us. It is well. The word of God continue. You see, some of us, we, we, we reject constructive criticism. And when we reject criticism, we fail because constructive criticism is out of love. Many times our accent, because we are from the islands, we come off strong and people misunderstand us. We tend to speak fast. We try to get out all the words at once. And, and, and that's our dialect. So we have to actually train ourselves to speak slow. Because we live in a place where they don't talk too fast. And it makes us look ignorant. That's what it is. But today I want to ask a question. What significant adjustment have been on hold in your life for too long? Some of us have some adjustment to make, but we are putting it on hold. And it becomes significant because we have to make it. It's time for a self-check. It's time for us to start blocking our own blessings. You see, I had my mind set on that building. I even stopped praying to find a place and pray to God for them to call me so we can have a cozy spot. But God didn't open that door. And one of the time I said, God, if that is the place that we're going to own, they cannot stop us. You see, many times we are asking God for things that we can't handle. Maybe we would never be able to afford it. Sometimes when people don't want you to have access to something, they give you the wrong price. And just like they say, when a woman wants to get rid of a man, she asks him for a lot of money. Yes, she asks him for a big money. I learned that when I was young. Ask him for a big money and he will leave you alone because he's not going to give it to you. But if you ask him for that big money and he give it to you, what are you going to do? <laughs> what did mama said? Yes, because you can't handle it. If you really want to kill a person, give them a position that they're not trained for. 
So, I have all kind of thoughts in my head. And when I see God open a different door the other day, I said to Sister Nikki, Sister Nikki, I was talking to the owner of the, um, the manager of the hotel where we stay at. And she said, why, Reb? I said, because we're going to move. <laughs> and it sounded like a joke because every time we try to find a place, it don't work out. But we have to remember who is in control, who we worship. It's not what we want for us. It's what God wants for us. So if you're out there looking for something and it's not happening, trust God's timing. He took nine months. I didn't even check till I look back. Nine months up to date for the lease to be signed. The realtor called and he said, but pastor, they send it after four. So I didn't see it. I said, thank you. I, all I need to hear what date it came and I signed it on the next the 28th the next day so if you are pregnant with anything I declare that you will give birth to it in due time some people have been pregnant for years and cannot find a place to birth out but today I pray that whatever is in you you will birth it out I did not get discouraged. I kept looking. You see, when we're tired of doing it our way, then we give it to God. I was very hesitant and even signing the lease. Mm -hmm. I was. I was hesitant to even acknowledge the place. Even though God said yes. But somebody had a dream. Said, Rev, I had a dream. That you receive a place, but you don't want to sign the lease. You're, you're worried about the place. You don't want to sign the lease. And it was true. The same way the dream went. So we thank God for the people of El Shaddai. Somebody clap for Jesus. And according to the word of God, if we go to the book of Hosea chapter 4, Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, my God, Hosea chapter 4. Four, verse 6 he says my people are being destroyed because they don't know me my people perish from lack of knowledge it meaning that they don't know God knowledge meaning you don't know and then it has to do with the leaders and this will tie right into Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. When I gave Bobo Shanti that scripture yesterday, he write it in his phone. <laughs> I said, God said he will give your pastor according to his heart to feed you with knowledge and understanding. He said, what scripture? I said, Jeremiah 3, 15. I said, that's one of my favorite quotes. I said, God will give your people to minister to you according to his heart. That will give you knowledge and understanding. So you're talking about the book that your daughter don't understand. You need a leader in your life. I told him, I said, you need a leader in your life to feed you and your daughter. Mighty God. Here in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, it's saying that my people are perishing. And why? Because the spiritual leaders in the book of Hosea, they became wrongdoers. So God was rebelling against the leaders. Hallelujah.
we have responsibility to lead God's people. And if the word of God said, my people perish because of lack of knowledge, it means that the people are in the church and they didn't know God. Knowledge means you don't know. So it means that if your pastor don't teach you how, it won't happen. Because his job is to give you the know-how. Knowledge means know-how. To apply yourself. And understanding means revelation. Because when it's broken down, it will be revealed to you. So you understand. And this is when we have to pray for pastors. We have to pray for pastors. Because this scripture is directed to pastors and leaders. People who, are in, who, have, who have sheep to shepherd. The word of God, no, don't, it don't lie. And, and I'm, I'll continue. It says, since you priests refuse to know me, I refuse to recognize you as my priests. Since you have forgotten the laws of your God, I will forget to bless your children. Jesus. So sometimes it's our own wrongdoing that will cause our children not to be blessed. And, and I pray to God. I, I, every day I, when I read the scripture, I ask God to forgive me. If I know that this is what God was going to use me to do, I would have done my part long ago and come out of sin so my children would have been blessed. Because if it's saying that wrongdoing, pastors who are doing wrongs, God refused to bless their children. Job children were wrongdoers. He was asking God to forgive them. He never told them to repent. But yet he was, you cannot repent for your children. You can pray for them. But they are responsible for their own sins. So we ask God to touch their heart so they can repent. The first day I spoke in tongues, I have never forgotten. I was not dressed. I was laying on my floor and my son called me. He was struggling going in and out of jail in Florida. And I laid there on the floor. I was moving from Hartford to Waterbury because I couldn't take the noise from the train track. I live right there on the train track. You remember. And I laid there on the floor and I was on 21 days of fasting. And I started moving some of the things. I came home from church at the time. I laid here on the floor and one of my church sisters called me and she was talking to me. And then my son called. And I connect the call three way. And I don't know why the Lord began to use me to say to my son, if you kill anybody, you better repent. He said, mommy, I never kill anybody. And suddenly, I begin to speak in tongues. And I heard Sister Julie said, what, what, what was that? You know, Sister Julie. Say, how are that? One whole sentence. That was the first time I speak in tongues. I used to speak in tongues in my sleep. But the first time it came out, I was rebuking my own child. You see, when you talk to your children, them about things that might have been so, God will honor your prayer requests. And I'm here to tell you today, it took me maybe almost nine months before I ever speak in tongues again. Because that same week, the devil sent me a man. And that man stayed in my life for months and for almost two years. But one day, that man and I, we had a fight and I went home. And when I was home from the man, I called another sister from the church to pray with me. I was on 21 day fasting because I love to fast. And I was on the fasting and I said, sis, the Lord said to pray with me. And she said, continue to pray. God is doing something. I was at work in them people truck, work truck. And I was praying, praying, praying because me and this man in a war. And it was a toggle between me and God and the ministry and the man. And believe me, I started to speak in tongues. And uh, my co-worker heard it and went in the building and tell them that I'm going crazy. That I'm outside speaking to demons. I didn't last too long at the job after that. They let me go. Because I was a new hire. I spent four years. I was the only person there for that short time. 
And you know when they're doing the fiscal year, they have to let the, the, the newbie go because I was soon to be qualified for union. And once you get union, they can't talk to you. So they let me go because I'm always praying outside. So I'm, I'm here to let you know that honor God with your substance. Yes. God wait until the man, me and the man fight. And I went home. I was by myself. I fell on my step and I didn't know that I had a more worse lip. I saw snow and the blood was in the snow. I said, God, look at this. I take him back. Because my flesh wanted pleasure. Flesh. Flesh can shame you. You know that, right? And it took me two years and change to walk away from that. God moved me. And here I am today bringing the word of God. Because at the time I was in Bible school. I was, you see, when you love God, even when you're in sin, you will never turn back. I was still in Bible school and that's what kept me because I have to read the Bible every day, every night. And I had good grades. But the old flesh, that old flesh, that old flesh was bothering me. And it's funny because now that I'm married, I know how to put my flesh under subjection. You see, when I was single, because when you're in a relationship with people, until you're married, you're still single. So when I was in relationship, I didn't know how to put my flesh under subjection. You see, when you're clean, when you're married, you become clean. Right, mom? When you're married, you become clean. Sin will damage your ministry. I'm telling you. But the thing is, I wasn't a... I didn't always vocalize everything to people. So many people see me, they didn't, you didn't even know what was happening in my life. I don't talk. I'm very secretive with my problems because that's how I used to be. I don't know how to suppress things because I'm shame. When you see some people leave you alone, don't be mad at them. Many times it's sin. Them shame. Many times some people don't call you no more. Don't be upset. A sin, a shame, then shame. Them in a sin. You see them not come at church. Don't be mad. They will even block you. Sin will allow your best friend to block you. Because they don't want you to know what's happening. And they end up. I end up by myself. Because I live far anywhere. Nobody would know. But God knows. God knows. Until the day he cleaned me up properly. And he didn't give me. One little man. And he turned to me and said, You see that man there? Him can bless you. So just know, say, I eat that between me and you. So we still have to have a decent relationship with God. We cannot put the husband in front of God. God is in, already in front of the husband. God is already in front of the man. So you have to put that old flesh under subjection. And allow God to deal with you properly. He said make full proof of the ministry that he give you. He said two shall be in the bed and one will be taken away. So if you put the man before God. Hey. Dog eat your supper. Make full proof of your ministry. You know, there are some people that we love and God is calling them to ministry. Not just calling them to baptize on one bench. Calling them to ministry. But only if they're ready to make full proof of that ministry. One woman tell me the other day, she said, just cool off at the baptism thing for now. May, may I try to say, all right, boss. All right, but Yes. Cool off at the baptism thing for now. May I try to work out? So I say, okay, boss. You see, God is in control of everything. And when we put, you hear what God said about pastors, if pastor refuse to acknowledge me, I'm not going to bless their children. 
What happened to Eli? His children were not blessed. They became crooks in the church. They were stealing the church money. They were sleeping with the women. They meet them at the door and sleep with them. And Eli the priest did not stop it. So God had to kill the whole of them one day. Everybody dead see him dear. So we pray that sin will never take over this ministry. We pray today that sin will never take over this. We pray today that anyone that the devil sent to destroy us. We finish them with this sword. By the blood of Jesus Christ. If you read the Bible carefully, it tells you how many leaders God had to kill them early because of disobedience. So today we pray and we cover El Shaddai in the blood. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to finish this message. But I want to say one thing here. Prayer is knowing God and have intimacy with God it's time for us to be obedient and learn to let some things go and forgive you want God to forgive you to bless you but God said you have to learn to forgive those who hurt you when you forgive them then I will forgive your sins so when we realize that we are not getting the blessings that we are asking God for Sometimes we need to check our prayer point. Mark chapter 11. I think it's verse 24. It says, whenever you, whenever you stand up and pray. Yes, Mark chapter 11 verse 25. It says, when you pray, ask God for forgiveness. Ask God to forgive you. Ask God to forgive you. And you'll need to forgive the people that you hurt. We are running to God and asking him for things. And at the same time, we refuse to forgive the people that we hurt. We refuse to forgive the people that hurt us. We refuse to let those baggage go. Yet we want God to bless us. Today I want you to be on your feet because we are going to pray. It's time for us to pray. When I finished talking to Bobo Shanti yesterday, such and such man said, I need to forgive a lot of people. Not just one, but a lot. He said, whole heap of people I need to forgive. So today we're going to ask God that those who hurt us, we're letting it go. We are letting it go. If we don't let it go, it will block where we are supposed to go. We have to let things go. Today we ask God, Father, we come before you right now. And we ask you in the name of Jesus Christ to give us a heart of forgiveness. A forgiving heart so we can forgive those who trespass against us. The Bible said Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray in the book of Matthew. And Jesus tell them that they should say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It means that we are liars if we are still holding grudges. Because we refuse to forgive that man because he hurt you. You forgive to lay, ba 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 ba. You refuse to forgive the woman because she hurt you. Some of us, our siblings, they are foolishness. If you think about them and the things they do. But we still have to forgive them. Many of us, we sleep with some deadbeat people. And we forgive them. So if we can forgive some deadbeat people that we lay in bed with, we can forgive our relatives and our friends. It's true. Am I lying, church? Many of us, we forgive people that we sleep with, that even when they crush us on the street. But we forgive them. So it's time for us to forgive those relatives, those ugly sisters and brothers, because what they did to us, it's ugly. What they did to us is ugly. So today we're going to put it before God. What that mother-in-law did to you is ugly, but you're going to put it before God. What that father-in-law, those in-laws, what they said about you is ugly. But we're going to put it before God. What that auntie and uncle did to you is ugly. 
But we're going to put it before God. What brothers and sisters did, it's ugly. It's a disgrace what some of them did to us. But today, we're not going to allow them to rent out space inside of our head for free anymore. We're letting it go. Because sin will kill us. When we have a grudge in our heart, we begin to speak sin. Because it comes from hatred. It's not easy to forgive people. It's hard. Especially when they, they do some things and they're bragging about it. Many of us, we have some Jezebel in our family. Some Judas that we have to put up with. But today we're going to let it go. We don't want sin to cut us off short. And today I want you to open your mouth. And tell God. That son. That daughter. That old co-worker. That old friend. Many of us, we, we hold the grudge because they, they said things about us and we can't fix it. And sometimes many of the things that they said about us is a lie. And some of them are true. So we have to learn to let it go and ask God to give us a heart of forgiveness. We need a forgiving heart, an understanding heart. Many of us, is because we don't understand. The Bible says, lack of knowledge caused my people to perish. So today we are asking God, oh God, give me a heart of understanding. Oh God, give me a forgiving heart. Oh God, strengthen me so I can forgive that fool. Yes, we call them fool because of what they did to us. It was foolish, foolishness. So today we ask God, take this fool out of my heart today. I empty myself. Take this idiot. We call them idiot. Because when they did what they did to us was idiocy. So today, Lord God, we ask you to fix our heart. It's painful, but we have to let it go. It's not easy when somebody hurts you. And you have to forgive them. But I'm here to tell you, even if you were molested, and you're still carrying that burden. It's time to let it go. Let it go. Let it go. You don't have to hate men. You don't have to hate women. Let that pain from the past go. It's time to let it go. We cannot afford to allow sin to destroy us and our ministry and our children. Many of us was raised by weak men and women. Our parents were weak because they were abused. Some of them were abused. Sexually abused. Some of them were emotionally abused. Some of them were physically abused. And it makes them weak. And we despise them because all they do is foolishness. So today we ask God. To take it from our heart. To remove the pain. I remember there was a time when I wanted to slaughter a young lady in Florida. Because every time the police see her with my son, they would arrest him. Because all they do is fight. And I said, little girl, if I catch you, I'm going to pull, pull your neck out of your frame. I said, if I have a catch, I was just waiting for my American citizenship. I said, any day I get my citizenship, I'm coming to Florida and I'm going to rip your head out. And God never allowed it to happen. Before that took place, the Lord had me to surrender and give my life to God. So you see, sometimes God will stop us on the way to Damascus. So God stopped me on my way to Damascus. Sometimes I laugh when I think about it. I forgave her. The other day I was talking to my son. I said, how is that young lady doing? He said, I heard she's doing well. I said, may the Lord bless her. When we are among the wrong people, or our children get involved with the wrong people, all that take place is problems. Pure contention. Spiritual warfare. But today we pray. Today we put them before God.
Many of us, we get caught up with the wrong people. And all we fight is warfare that don't belong to us. Because they are fighting generational curse. And we get caught up in a crossfire. So today we pray and we break every curses. Every curse. I want you to open your mouth and pray. Every curse that my children got caught up in, I break it right now. Every curse. Every curse that I got caught up in today, oh God, I break it. Every curse that you got yourself caught up in today, we break it by the blood of Jesus Christ. Every curse, every generational curse, some of them don't belong to us. So today, today we separate ourselves from the curse from our mother's side. Today we separate ourselves from the curse from our daddy's side. Today we break, we break, we break, we break away. We separate ourselves. We separate ourselves from the curse that we got entangled in. Paul said, don't be entangled again. With the yoke of bondage. Some of us God set us free. And we entangle with some people. That are in bondage. Our children get entangled with some people. That are in bondage. But today we break it. By the blood of Jesus Christ. We break it. We break it. Every bondage that's holding us back. We break it. We break out of it. Some of you can't even see your money. Use off every penny and have nothing to show for it. So today we pray that any serpent that is swallowing your money, we chop off every head of every serpent. That swallow your money. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mommy, you get cut regular? You get cut often? Little little cut? No? Yes. Holy Spirit, show me. So you're used to it. It's not of God, mommy. It's at it's been a long time. Jesus. As I sat here, I see blood. And I'm like, Lord, why are you showing me blood? He said, uh, the woman. The woman. I pray that as of today, it stop. Raise your hand. It shall be no more. It shall be no more. Hey. No more blood covenant. Hey, No more blood covenant. No more blood covenant. It ends here in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I dry it up right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. No more blood covenant. It's done right here. And as you stand right here, I set your daughter free. Your daughter in Jamaica. I set her free right now. As I release you, I release your daughter. I release your daughter in Jamaica right now. From every bondage in the name of Jesus Christ. You know what I'm talking about. I release your daughter right now. What is your mother's name? Yes. Pansy. I release. You have other auntie in Jamaica? What's your name? And that's it. By her side. Yes. Yes. Wait a minute. I'm talking to you. By your mother's side. 
just your mother. Your mother have any other name? Huh? Okay, because I heard a name I've never heard before as I'm praying for her. Oh, Jesus. Raise your hand. Your mother is in bondage. Your mother is in bondage. As I'm praying for her, the Lord showed me you. Sword on your right shoulder. Will you say, Mother? Wait, what's the next name? Last name. I release her right now. Wherever she is right now, I declare over her life the liberty that she deserves. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare upon her life the liberty right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it is done. I wasn't talking about her. I'm talking about you. Jesus, look at God. Tell your mother the Lord said it is well. Oh God. Hey. Hey. Jesus. I want you to pray, people of God. Every yoke of bandage. Open them out and declare. Every yoke of bondage has to go right now. Every yoke of bondage has to go right now. Every yoke of bondage has to go right now. Every yoke of bondage has to go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So all this time I think I thought she was a granny. Oh, no, I'm just surfing in the spirit. You see, God, God moved. There are, listen, when it's like this, the same thing that's happening to your mother is happening to her children. I want you to, somebody clap for Jesus. But every yoke of bondage. We have to break it by the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody bless God. don't go too far um, as our pastor our reverend our mother said, we should forgive because we're trusting God for forgiveness and for those who have anything in their heart I pray that you may lead at the throne she might not say come for altar call because God can talk to you wherever you are so I want you to lay it right down because we're about to pray for her and I don't want us to pray for her with a heavy heart for she said in her sermon we should pray for our pastors and I don't want us to be praying for her with a heavy heart so I want you to lay it all at the feet of Jesus Christ lay it all at the cross let us all be on our feet and let us say a word of prayer the the yoke is light but it's a lot and we have to pray her strength Elijah needed strength he needed someone to lift his hands up so let us lift her up in prayer as she go about the Lord's business brother Tony you want to pray for her Rev? amen but um as Rev was uh, talking about that it took nine months um, for us to move into our own building. She was saying it started in her kitchen. Nine months later, she ended up here. Nine months is in her own building. Um, a couple of 
maybe a week ago, um, I was asleep and I had a dream and I started, I just saw babies. I just seen baby after baby and I was praying, praying, praying in the spirit. And then I, in the middle of the night, like I just woke up and shouted, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And my wife jumped up and said, like, what's the, what is, what is going on? I said, I don't know. Um, I was thinking to myself, I was asking God, what are you showing me? me that my wife is pregnant again? No. Um, or, you know, I, I have a, some youth that I, I meet with during the week and I was texting them like, you know, what's going on? But what I should have did was ask God first. So I went into prayer and I asked God, I said, what was that you were showing me? showing me and he said that um you were inter interceding on behalf of the season it's breaking up i said what season is it he said it is a birthing season amen, amen. i don't know if you guys understand what i just said it's a birthing season so as rev is showing you that you know the ministry is birthing something so will all of us amen amen, amen. All right, be on your feet. Just stretch your hands towards Rev as we pray today. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, giving you thanks for the word that you have poured into your servant that she has poured unto us. Father, we pray that you touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Father, we pray that everything that she has spoken, my God, return unto her tenfold. Father, we pray that you pour into her, fill her up until she overflows. Father, we pray that anything, my God, that has been sent, my God, to destroy her will never reach her in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I pray that you create a hedge of protection round and about her round and about her children find them even now lord god and cover them under the blood of jesus christ of nazareth father she has putting her all into her ministry that you have given her so father i pray that you release your angels and give them charge over her give them charge over her ministry my god strengthen her in her spirit my god strengthen her my god in her knowledge strengthen her in her wisdom strengthen her in her understanding in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we pray and give you thanks and asking all of these things father even as we get ready to leave father i pray that you go before us on the highways father i pray you give us journey and mercy for traveling i pray lord god that as we go forth and leave here today we will say it was good for us to be in your presence. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I ask all these things. Amen. You may all be seated. Um, is there anyone worshiping with us for the first or second time in person? I want you to stand, tell us your name, and tell us who invited you. Please. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dorothy Powell. I was invited by Pastor Joycelyn Rattigan. We are friends from way back, way back, way back. So I'm so good, so glad to be here today to hear her powerful ministry. And I will be coming back. Blessings always. Amen and amen. We thank you so much for visiting El Shaddai and we are taking you by your word. We'll see you again. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Praise God. It is a blessing and an honor, an honor to be here for the first time. I must greet the pastor in the holy name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our soon coming king, everlasting father, and our prince of peace. Bless her in her going out, Jesus. Bless her in her coming in.
Bless her wherever she sits, she stands, wherever she pray, wherever she stay. In your holy name, Jesus. Bless each and every one today, Jesus, and always bless them in your special way. My name is Beverly Powell, and I'm visiting for the first time. And I was invited by Sister Keisha here today. And it's a pleasure to be here. God bless each and every one. And may the name of Jesus stand beside you. Go wherever you go in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Mama Beverly. Sister Keisha, continue to do the work of the Lord. Amen. And I'm sure we've all heard the good news. And we have found a place of worship, something we've all been looking for nine months ago. And While I'm there, thank you, Lord. there has been a birth in season. And we know that taking care of a baby, it requires a lot in the very beginning. And in the same manner, this place it's going to require a little TLC, a little tender, loving care. There are some things that are going to be needed from the very beginning. We're going to need a place for the children. We're going to need little stuff for them. We're going to need more chairs. The rent is still has to be covered. We're going to need a little help and participation. So I'm asking those who are online and those who are are in person to just help us take care of this baby that was given birth so that afterwards it wouldn't need us to take care of it anymore but he will be taking care of us amen amen and amen we also have a church in jamaica we have many more to come we thank god for the work that he's doing in el shaddai but we are supposed to be going to jamaica in november i think 9 to the 13th and there's still work to be done you might not hear her say anything but she's working earnestly behind the scene i hear one member from here said rev doesn't ask for anything she kept doing 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 and this is a good woman of god she will just be doing stuff and she's not asking but let us know that she needs the help and we're not doing this for her we're doing it for god Amen. For he will bless you. You might be doing things in secret, but he will bless you in the open. Amen. So let us remember El Shaddai here and in Jamaica. Whatever the Lord placed on your heart. Amen. I don't want you to feel like, oh, church, ever want to take my people money? No, you're not doing this for us. You're doing it for the Lord. I always used to think that the person who I bless will be blessing me, but no, that's not how it works. Amen. Amen. So without further ado, we have our trip to Grenada this month. So if you haven't gotten all the information, you can get it from Rev. We'll be going to Grenada on September 22, well, 2021 and 22 for three days. So for those who haven't yet booked their trip, you can get information from Reverend Joyce and Rattigan. And we'll be having a members meeting right after service. So please do not run home. Right, Sister Lorraine? Where is Sister Nikki? She gone already? <laughs> All right, so yes, there will be a members meeting after church. And I want us all to be on our feet feet as Rev close us out with the benediction. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm, I've been blessed by today's message. Even though usually I always go back like Sunday night or Monday night or Tuesday night and watch it. And when I'm watching it, to be honest with you, I don't take phone calls. I just, and I feel like I'm in church when I'm home watching these videos. And the other day, I have the opportunity to talk to a woman of God that is from this ministry. And uh, I heard my voice in the background. <laughs> and I 
honestly, every time I call her when she's home, because she comes home like maybe seven at night, sometime a little later. She's always, she said, me a ketchup, me a ketchup. She don't want to talk to me. She said, me a ketchup on the broadcast. I said, okay. You know, so it's a blessing. One other woman I've got, she said, to be honest, I wasn't feeling so good. But, you know, I went on Facebook and I just started to watch all of the video and I started to feel better. So people have got, listen, I don't know about you, but I've been blessed. And these are good messages. And how I know, because I follow very powerful men and women of God from back in the day before I became a pastor. Some of them, their stuff still pop up. And trust me, you're getting good food. Yes. And Sister Dorothy, it's, it's such a pleasure to have you. You know, it's the first time you really see me. <laughs> it's the first time she really see me preaching. I mean, live. She watch it on the live sometimes and, you know, whatever. But, yeah, she's, she's here with us. And it's, such a, it's good to know someone before that stage that they're at. And you watch them, you're like, oh, mm. So I, I know God has blessed you with this message, too. You felt it. And I need you to start coming up front. You're looking at me smiling. You're not here for your looks. All right? So let us, let us thank God for today. And mommy, just keep on sending the fire. You know? God knows you. And I know you know. We, you, you are an evangelist. Just continue to do God's work. You're not doing it for any man. You're doing it for the Lord. You see, sister, Anna acknowledge and she tell you, continue to work for God. You're not just coming to do Bible study. And you're not going to be good at it right away, but you're doing a great job. A amen? <laughs> it it take a while. It take a while. You know, the first time they gave me a microphone in church, I was an idiot. And it was a good pastor, man of God. And he said, preach to me. I'm like, these Africans are so ignorant. He said, preach to me. I was ashamed. And one woman of God said, leave Joyce Lynn alone. Now she got her own church. Just by defending me, God give her a church. <laughs> she have her own church. And I'm thankful to God because sometimes you, see some, you can't just jump. You have to. So we thank God for the baby steps. I wait, I, I've waited. If you know me and where I came from, I've waited. I have waited. I've waited for years. And I'm thankful to God that I've waited. And I'm thankful to God for each and every one of you that are here, especially those who are online. I, I, I love the online viewers. You know why? Even when some of them are in church, they are still online. Yes. Somebody clap for the people online. Even when they are in church, even in Jamaica, some of them are in church in Jamaica and they are still watching the live. Some here, some in England in church, because some of our members, they go to church over there in England, go to different church, and they are watching it. So we thank God for what he's doing in this ministry. If you don't believe, visit a different church and you'll see the difference. People call me from Aruba, say, Reb, I have a problem because I go to church and that pastor don't even compare me. I said, it's God, it's not me. I said, I am an idiot when I'm done, but it's what God put in my mouth. That you hear. So don't compare me to the pastor. Because maybe that pastor is smarter than me. It's just what God is doing here among us. So we thank God for what he's doing. And we thank God for where we are going. No, you didn't give them the new address. Did you? The new address, write it down. It's 60 Forest Street. It's right across from Hartford High School. 60 Forest Street, Hartford, Connecticut. That's our new address. We will be there next Sunday. We, got, we have flyer. We didn't just, it's on the flyer. I'm just, I'm going to publish it as soon as we're done. And no, no, this is set. Yes. We, we're not going to, we're not going to just give it out. We, we're going to put out the flyer as soon as I get home. It's, the flyer has been done since Thursday. So we thank God for what he's doing. And um, we thank God for, I was looking forward if we could do a little barbecue tomorrow at the place while we are fixing it. Because we need to work in there. We need stuff to get done. It's not set up, people of God. We walk in here every Sunday and everything is set up. And Shane eat, Mia eat. Er, yeah, and over there needs to be set up. Are you going to be here? You're working. 
no, I don't want you to come all the way from New York to, 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 bother, to bother you. No, don't worry. The Lord will bless you because of the heart that you have. But I was thinking about that little barbecue. I don't know if anybody's up for it. Who is working tomorrow? We could, while we're setting up stuff, huh? You're going to be at work? A little bit. What time you coming home? Double. Keep that you're not getting none. So let us just see if we can. I, I'll, I'll look further into it. You know, it would be good. We have a little get together over there while we are setting things in order. Because this Wednesday, we're going to have um, fasting. And Friday, we're going to have service Friday night. Moving forward, unless I'm not around, but uh, once I'm here, we're going to have service three days a week. So everything is up and running. We don't even need cheers, but we need the cheers. So for those of you who make, um, what you call it, pledge, you can see Sister Anna before you go, wh whoever make pledge. We have to finish square off with them people so we can get in and do things right. Let us be on our feet to share the grace. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We thank you for the new place. We thank you for the new people that are coming. We thank you, Lord God, that we are about to take over Hartford. <laughs> and I'm laughing because the Lord, you told me that you caused me to laugh. And we are leaving East Hartford and we are going to take over Hartford with the word of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, you're sending soldiers from the east, the west, the north, and south to work in the ministry. And Lord, we thank you in advance because you have done it. And Lord, we give you all the honor and the praise and the glory. And we call it done in the name of Jesus Christ because you are the provider. And you will provide all the necessities that we need to go forward in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let us share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow all the days, and we shall forever and ever. Amen.